Hi, I'm Azran from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and I've had the privilege of helping to build new businesses that challenge the status quo. From a low-cost, long-haul airline that industry experts said could not be done, and taking that airline from that PowerPoint presentation, one single plane, to a fleet of 25, a billion dollars of revenue, 2,500 employees, and the first long-haul, low-cost airline to be publicly listed to joining my friends to create iFlix, an internet video on demand service that the first hundred investors rejected. So fantastic. They didn't see a need for a product like serve emerging markets, and today it's in three continents across Asia, Middle East, and Africa, serving millions of people in 30 markets. I've also gone through a personal journey from an overweight person to an Ironman triathlete. And what's driven me is a sense of curiosity and purpose. The courage to act for me comes from recognizing that the pain of regret is much bigger than the pain of risk. Let me share with you how we can shape breakthrough mindsets, build entrepreneurial cultures, and achieve breakthrough performance. Through my experiences building startup businesses that defied convention and challenged the status quo, from AirAsia X to iFlix, and now technology startups Naluri, MoneyMatch, and others that I've mentored, I want to share how we can overcome the beliefs that hold us back and challenge the dogmas so that we can achieve breakthrough innovations, become inspiring leaders, and ultimately be our best and most purposeful selves. Let's please give a very warm welcome to our guest speaker, Osran Ozman Rani to SAP Arima Live. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Alex, for having me this morning. Uh, are you guys ready to jump? Are you guys ready to leap into the unknown? Check us out. Basically, the is about a thousand times more dangerous than skydiving because you just don't have the time for a second backup shoot. For the geeks and all of us, the fatality rate is 1 in 2,500 jumps. The non-fatal accident rate is 1 in 250 jumps. Does that sound exciting? <laughs> but if you think about it, jumping into the startup world, the world of the unknown, your failure rate is between 75 to 90%. So getting into the internet business, you're going to have to have a lot more screws loose than these base jumpers. <laughs> uh, and the reason for that is, uh, as exciting and glamorous as it may seem, as Alicia mentioned, um, trying to take on big, powerful incumbents is an incredibly daunting task. Because these are really powerful giants. Probably giants powered by SAP Ariba. So the moment you stay still, that big giant grabs you and takes you on. Speed, agility, the only thing that survives. This is what I tell my team members at Airage X and Iflix and Nullery. It's our ability to stay ahead of the game. We don't have size, we don't have scale, we don't have balance sheet, we don't have brand, we don't have distribution. The only thing we have going for us is we have to move faster than everybody else. The day that we move as fast or as slow as the big giant is the day that that big satellite TV crushes us, that big Singapore Airlines crushes us. It's the ability to move fast. All of us want to achieve breakthroughs from where we are today and achieve new levels of performance and success. Whether it's for our companies and the impact we want to make, or even in our personal lives to realize our full potential. Usually, the breakthrough ideas on what to do are already within us and within our organizations. But often, they're not allowed to see light of day or they're not given enough support to thrive because organizations are focused on doing things how they're used to. And it's usually because these are the formula that made them successful. So breakthrough ideas get shot down because either top management doesn't want to take that risk or there's too much planning 
demanding that all contingencies are mapped out and identified and scenarios planned, and it doesn't get implemented because there's always 10 reasons to say no for every one reason to say yes. Or that there's the expectation that it must clear financial hurdles. Or because there's a government policy or regulation that doesn't allow it today. Or maybe because it has been tried before and failed. But when you're trying to do something that no one else in the world has ever done, you're not going to get everything right. Our philosophy was on a really good day, we're going to do 10 quick things and we're lucky if five hit the mark. On an average day, maybe two or three go well and six, seven, eight go wrong, which basically means you have to start with this mindset that things are going to be wrong and that's okay. But that doesn't hold you back because you start thinking about what are all the reasons it could go wrong, what's the business continuity plan, what's the risk mitigation plan, you never end up doing those 10 crazy ideas. So there are a couple of crazy ideas in this one picture. First, we thought in the early days, uh, we'd be like the first low-cost airline to have full in-flight interactive screen, in-flight entertainment screens at every seat, even in economy, touch screen, select your movies, you can order your meals. It even had instant messaging. So if you're kind of bored in a plane and you kind of fancy that person on 12G, you're like, hey 12G, I'm at 17D, nice to meet you, my name's Azran. That was popular. And you know, the whole idea was, you know, instead of having to wait for the flight attendants to come, I can look through the menu and say, you know, I want the, the chicken rice and I want a Coke, zap your credit card, or to go straight to the galley. Problem is this generation today, instant gratification, right? You order, you want it now, which meant logistically, it was a nightmare for flight attendants because 12G wants a Coke. Okay, 13D wants something else. 27G wants something else. It was crazy, it just doesn't work at all. Uh, and of course, when it comes to movies, Hollywood doesn't trust you to declare as an airline how many people watch which movies. So they charge you a licensing fee for every movie title times every screen or seat times every flight times every plane. Just a lot of money. And we're like, well, so we, we've got a lot of this fixed costs. How should we price this? You know, $10, $20, uh, how many do we need to break even? Ooh, do we need to like have 50, 60% of people pay for this? Are they gonna pay for it? Well, turns out 50% of our flights are late at night. Most people come in, they even wanna sleep. But if you charge even $10, this is Asia. They, even if they cannot sleep, they're not gonna pay $10. They would rather watch that plane on the globe going <laughs> for eight hours instead of paying for content. Clearly this was not a viable model. And instead of finger pointing and blaming, we decided, look, you know what? We're gonna scrap it. Uh, it was a $12 million write-off. Pretty painful, but no one lost their jobs. No one was, you know, blamed. It was, we tried something, it didn't work, move on to the next thing. Sometimes in mistakes, there are also um, silver linings because what we discovered when we removed the in-flight entertainment systems is that the plane became two tons lighter. And when fuel prices are high, two tons less weight is a massive fuel advantage over, um, over your competitors who have these in-flight entertainment screens. I want to share how all of these beliefs and dogmas can be overcome so that innovations can break through and we can achieve our best and purposeful selves.